Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog filter design. In this example we will discuss the Butterworth response for a low pass filter circuit and we will see how the filter order will affect the cutoff frequency. We will see of course step by step our calculations and also verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our objective is the following. We like to design a Butterworth response active low pass filter and the specifications are shown here. We need to have a maximum pass month ripple 2 dB. The minimum attenuation we require will be 20 dB. The cutoff frequency is 1 kHz and the stop band frequency is 4 kHz. The meaning of these specifications are briefly as follows. At that 4 kHz we need to have a minimum attenuation of 20 dB. And we have at the specific frequency which we call the pass band frequency we will calculate shortly. There we will have a reduction in the gain by 2 dB. Okay, we will use a selling key filter circuit configuration and we will also calculate the actual stop and attenuation of our final design. And that is the one of the important topics for this video is the effect. So they discuss the effect of filter order. So what happens if we increase our order? Okay, let's now look at our solutions. First, the calculations part. Step one is calculate your filter order. For that, you need to relate the A max to the epsilon P first. That is then using this formula. You substitute here to 2 dB and you get here 0 0.7648. The A minimum is also in a similar way related to that epsilon S, which is then again a scalar value. So you substitute here 20, you get here 9.9499. And taking these together and using the formula for the low pass Butterworth response, and this is now shown here, you see here again the epsilon S, epsilon P, stop and frequency and the cutoff frequency. Now we can now substitute here the values. And then you get here 1.85 approximately. Now, in order to realize our circuit, we need to have an integer value. So going for the first order will be not sufficient. So we need to go for a second order, which means NS2. Now for our circuit realization, we need to use a selling key low pass filter circuit. So that means in this case, since we have a second order, we need to use a two pole selling key low pass filter. So that is actually this circuit. You see here the unit gain feedback configuration for our operation amplifier four components, two resistors, R1 and R2, and two capacitors. And the design now is, the objective is, to calculate the component values here. So our step two is the component values. We set here the R1 is equal to R2 and we define it as R. So we set here that equal to one kilo ohm. And the next step is then calculating your scaling factor that is then given by this formula. You see here one over the R we just selected and also the omega c, which is then 2 pi times the cutoff frequency. Now we have selected 1000 ohm, so 2 pi times 1000 hertz. That means in this case 1.59 approximately times 10 to the power minus 7. And this is an important value we need to use in order to calculate the C1 and C2. Now for that we bring up our butter response. You see here in the left column our filter order, the number of sections and what kind of a section you need, two pole or three pole, selling key filters, and also the parameters here. Now we see here C1 over C, C2 over C, etc. So this ratio, which is then this capital letter C, which is our scaling factor, must be 1.414. And the second one will be then 0 0.7071. This is, by the way, an exact form of square root of 2, and this is the 1 over the square root of 2. Now let's go now to the Calculations from the table here, we see that we need to have a C1 is equal to 1.414 times the scaling factor C. So just rewrite this ratio and you get this one. In a similar form for C2, you have this. Now we need to use our scaling factor and that is just this one. And you get here approximately 225 nanofarads. And the next one will be then here 112.5 nanofarads. So we have now our C1 and C2 and we have selected our resistors R1 and R2 as 1 kilo ohm. So the design is in fact completed. We go now to the next part, which is the actual stop and attenuation calculation. For that, we start with the pass mode frequency. Now we calculate that using this formula for the low pass filter, but our response, cutoff frequency is known, epsilon P is known from step one. We just substitute the values, you get here almost 875 Hertz. So at this frequency, you will get a gain of minus a max or minus 2 dB. That is the meaning of this frequency. Now we can now calculate the a minimum, which is the actual stop band attenuation using this formula, where you see the epsilon p stop band frequency, the pass band frequency, and also the filter order. Now when you substitute here the values, you get here 24.1 dB. 
You can also do it in a different way, in this case also more convenient, by using the cutoff frequency directly and then you don't need the passman frequency and also don't need this epsilon p, so you only need your filter order and the specifications from here in the design. And that will result actually in the same way, which is in 24.1 dB. Now the important question, this causes the effect of filter order, so what happens? If we increase the filter order, what does it mean? So let's now go to that detailed analysis. I will take this table in the spreadsheet and show you there what happens if we increase the filter order, what happens with the cutoff frequency, and also what happens with our A minimum, the actual attenuation. So let's now go over there and see the effect. All right, we are now at the spreadsheet. I have here developed a bubble response table for the ripple we are actually talking about 2 dB, the A minimum, and also the cutoff frequency. So I actually made the complete list here. You see here also the epsilon P, epsilon S, the filter order, and of course we just rounded off to a value we can realize. We see more information like the actual sub attenuation we also have calculated, also the resistor we have chosen, the scaling factor, and the two capacitors we have also calculated from there. The values here in, in this shaded yellow region are the butter response parameter scale factors we actually f uh, saw in our uh, discussion in the table. So those are this 1.414 1 and the 0.7071. Now if we go to a higher order, for example, keep the specification as it is, but I would like to just increase the filter order. So I actually make the following. I just said, okay, I would like to keep the ripple as, as before. Cutoff frequency, everything is just exactly as before, but I would like to just change the A minimum. That will, of course, require a higher order filter. So that in this case, I make it 20, 30. You see actually here right away that we need to go to 2.68 approximately. Again, we need to go up. That means I need to have a third order. That means the following. I need to then use the different uh, values for my parameter scale factors for my bottom response. So those are the three values we also saw in our slide presentation. Now, you see also that the A minimum here is now increasing from 24.1 to 36.1. So if you increase your filter order in this case by one, you go also the attenuation by this much. Okay, going to a higher order by because I want to have an A minimum of 40, I see that I need a filter order which is 3.52 approximately. Of course, I need to again make that integer. I go to fourth order, and it's four, and I see again my actual stop band attenuation, which is now here 48.1. Now, in a similar fashion, I can go up and I make the fifth order, sixth order, and seventh order. And also see that we have three capacitors for a third order, four capacitors for a fourth order, five capacitors required for the fifth order, and six and seven etc. for the 6th and the 7th orders. For each design I have kept my resistors as 1 kilo ohm and I see here capacitors for each situation I calculated here using, again you, look, you can look at it, I do actually here this value will be then this times the scaling factor here and also this one will be again times the scaling factor. Similar form here and here and here and also here and here and here. So I do exact same uh, calculations there. You can also see here, see here how I calculate the epsilon p. The similar calculation you see here again the square root and then 10 to the power this over the uh, value what we have is 10 and a minus 1 and then you get your epsilon p. Now these are the results. You see here the capacitor values. These are all the capacitors we need. Let's now jump to the actual circuit in a TINA TI spice and also see the plot there and see also the discussion there in more detail. So let's now jump to the TINA TI SPICE. Okay, we are now here at the TINA TI SPICE simulator. You see here the all the circuits we have. So up from the second order, that's a two-pole selling key. Third order, three-pole selling key. Fourth order will be then two-pole, two-pole, so two two-pole selling keys in cascade, all low pass of course. Fifth order, this one is now a third order in cascade with the second order. So we get the fifth order. And all the capacitors we have discussed and calculated actually in the, uh, the, the spreadsheet are all here. This is uh, a sixth order, this one. You see also the output V06 and V05, etc. 
this is now second order in cascade with the second order in cascade with the second order so it means two pole two pole two pole you get again a six pole now we have here now the final one which is then three pole two pole two pole so we get seventh order low pass filter okay now in order to check now the results we have uh, discussed let's also do the analysis and then the AC analysis and go to the AC transfer characteristics and you can see directly what happens I already did that I will just show you how you do it but I already did that so this is now the uh, let's say the the way to do it you just wait a while and then you get the result it will take some time of course because we have seven circles so it needs to calculate some parts it depends on of course the complexity you see here uh, different colors but I already did that so I actually want to go to the circuit and all the labels here I have prepared for you guys so let me do the full screen here and you see now here the following situation uh, let me bring it up now this part is where you have the one kilohertz so let me make that a little bit larger so I like to I prefer to have it a little bit larger so you can see it more easily so you see here so all all the plots are of course for different orders you see it ns2 for second order third order fourth order etc and you see also here the gain so let me also make that large so it is better to see in the video otherwise it's way too small to discuss that maybe okay let's also do that again the cutoff frequency you see here the baseline is 0 db because you have unity gain feedback and so the gain is 1 over 0 db and this gain minus 3.1 3.01 db which is actually the, the cutoff frequency specification we get it at 1 kilohertz so everything is actually crossing at that point and this uh, sine line is the second order but this yeah olive line or maybe the dark uh, yellow line is steeper like that is of course a third order you see this pink line which is then going also steeper but it's of course fourth order and again if you increase the order you actually make it more steeper and go to the ideal situation where you have a sharp transition from pass band to stop band what you also see is it's actually what you see in this label you can bring it also here just to see you guys it is ns2 3 4 5 6 7 etc you see that the actual stop band attenuation at this value so this is actually this 4 kilohertz because this is 1 kilohertz 2 kilohertz 3 and 4 you see that your attenuation goes up so we have only increased the filter order so nothing else and you see actually that you decrease your attenuation at that frequency which is the 4 kilohertz so that's actually the effect of the circuit when you increase your order for this situation okay let's bring everything together in the slide presentation again and summarize the result again the cutoff frequency are attenuation for the second order and this is the summary we see here the second order up to seventh order and you see here the attenuations at that four kilohertz so we get the same cutoff frequency we get the better attenuation when you increase the filter order and this is of course something we prefer and not to have a shifted cutoff frequency so this is indeed perfect all right, for our example, considering the Butterworth response active low pass filters, we have seen how the filter order will increase your attenuation, but not your cutoff frequency. Your cutoff frequency will stay the same. And we have also looked at the calculations for this design. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer for them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.